All right, guys, Stellar Blade Review. This video is by GameSpot, so shout out to GameSpot. It's a great video. What we like, inspire us, and what we pay homage to says a lot. Obviously, IGN's gonna do one. Stellar Blade's influence. A bunch of people gonna do one. So the last two generation of character action games, and it wields them proudly. Let's see what I, let's see what uh, GameSpot ideas, says. But themes, designs, and even stylistic flourishes. You guys already got my like take on Bayonetta it. and near Automata. It is only through understanding where Stellar Blade comes from that one can begin to discern what it improves upon and where it falls short of the giants that developer Shift Up's title wishes to stand on the shoulders of. Okay. 31 hours played. Wow. Okay. The review code is provided by the publisher. Okay. Stellar Blade puts you in control of Eve, a human arriving at a far oh, yeah, we know this. future Earth riddled with monsters known as Natiba. We know this. Eve possesses superhuman powers, having been raised on a space colony. Bro, look at that boss battle, bro. Specifically to free what few survivors remain on the planet from the oppression of this omnipresent and existential threat. We do have engineering support. Bro, look at that tie she got on. That's swaggy. What? Is that so? Along the way, the story takes a few twists and turns, but largely stays in the realm of pulp science fiction that is sometimes undermined by its own need to one-up itself. Characters change motives in service of plot twists at a drop of a hat. Wait, and what? resume their previous mindset without acknowledgement or comment. There are he looks times familiar. There are you may wish the writing showed a bit more self-restraint rather than feel like the first season of a TV show throwing a Hail Mary for a second. The I mean, it's not always a bad thing, though. The quality of its writing tilts heavier towards Stellar Blade's disadvantage, as occasional head-scratching side quests are followed up by decidedly compelling ones, though not as often as it should. Just as you feel fatigued with following waypoints, the game serves a side quest with unique content and boss fights, or a narrative beyond just looking for someone who it turned out is already dead. The main story grazes the surface of subject matter like transhumanism and moral relativity, but it does little with them. Stilted and stiff voice acting also does little to help you take the story seriously, and often brings you I'm out of it. Lovely to meet you. You... You don't seem very likable. <laughs> All right. That coat swaggy. The quality of a character action game story has scarcely mattered to the overall package, but those expecting something above the genre average should readjust expectations. Where Stellar Blade does shine is in its moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, be they running full speed down the slope of a desert dune or fighting a cockroach monster that leaps out at you. Oh, box. bro, it's don't all genuinely bro. quite fun. Eve I wasn't is generally <laughs> given a mission that involves her, a fair amount of dynamic funny, set pieces, like. <laughs> and a large number of monsters, and that formula is successful. I can't wait for these boss fights, bro. There are a handful of missteps among these moments: oh. jumping sections, occasional okay. puzzles okay. that task Eve mm. with playing a arcade-like pipe connecting game, a keypad variation on Simon. But Sides, I, I like this though because it offers Sonic-like tunnel surfing segment. That either do not synchronize with the game's inherent I don't floatiness care. I don't care. or feel like diversions. That I don't care, came. bro. But it understands its own strengths. I, I wouldn't care about that. I don't care. I feel like that would be gameplay fun, though. It offers like different, like variety of like gameplay. Combat I like that. That leans heavily on parries and dodges as its core foundation. Far from a combo fest, Stellar Blade puts meat on the bones by feeding all your actions in battle into ultra powerful special moves. It does. Surviving through deflecting an attack or dodging out of the way does more than keep your life bar intact as it cranks up the bro, dial. That and is moves hard, you bro. That whole animation is crazy. Given the frame of opportunity. Those burst skills the are ridiculous. The hands of an enemy can rarely be attributed to a surprise attack or a pattern that defies reaction time but rather a lesson in understanding how it moves and how to employ your myriad of options in response. That is hard, Dying bro. Combat suggests an invitation to come back armed with knowledge you did not possess the last time you crossed that threshold. Bro, that blocking is insane. The larger issue and what keeps Stellar Blade from surpassing its well-known muses is that Shift Up's title does not demonstrate a particularly learned display of pacing. This is not to say that Stellar Blade is too short. For its genre, it sits on the higher end of our counts. The problem is that individual sections of the game are entirely too long. Nearly every door you need to go through is locked or underpowered, 
leading to a detour to find the key or press the switch that opens the door you hoped to go through ages ago, making it a rarefied occasion when you do simply just walk through the path you expected. Let's come back okay. later. We have okay. things to do. I, I, can, sense, I can understand it that. It's okay. often like Stella Blade wants to have its pacing both ways. On one hand, the game is constantly pushing you in a direction that feels like progression from a top-down perspective. On the other hand, a fair proportion of the game's enemies feel like genuine threats that can destroy Eve in one strong combo. I told you, I think the bosses in this game are a are, fair number oh of special my moves God. and attacks to finally route. But by putting so many of them between you and the objective, those little moment-to-moment -moment instances of fun begin to feel unwieldy and slightly tedious when stacked on top of each other. When the only real punishment for death is retreading the same combat-filled path once again, at some point, that feels punitive enough. The game's structure sometimes allows for you to make your own pacing by completing missions largely centered in the game's open fields. While large, these areas mostly funnel you down existing paths, regardless of whether or not you can imagine a more creative trail. Most frustratingly, there are only two of these zones and both are themed after deserts. One okay. subtropical, one semi-arid, meaning a prime opportunity for variety is wasted. Moreover, the cutoff for I side mean, quests two is of them, though, so like, early I wouldn't say it was wasted. and explicitly warned to you meaning you have to pack a lot of these missions in when they would feel better spread out over a longer period of time. Okay, but you just complained about the pacing, though. Occasional tiresomeness is the game's soundtrack, which consists of banger after banger. Cruising no, I can tell. The desert doing submissions for hours feels almost zen-like when accompanied by the soft interjections of a vocalist's crooning. <laughs> Boss fights run the gamut from heavy metal to pop, all making appropriate. Are these boss fights, bro? Oh my to the goodness! Sound of steel clashing against steel. Similarly, Stellar Blade can often impress graphically. Between oh, of course it does. Set pieces that dazzle to rather stunning character models. The NPCs were clearly prioritized in different categories, with some looking like living plastic dolls and others reusing bits and pieces of the other less prominent characters. But the main cast generally impresses in both fidelity and animation. Thank you. While Stellar Blade's non-linear areas offer little in the way of environmental variety, the main story stretches itself a little bit further. The game as a whole, barring a last minute jaunt into a visually exciting new frontier, tends to take place in the ruined buildings and the tunnels beneath them. The post-apocalyptic setting allowed Shift Up to create any combination of elements and ambiance they wanted, so it is disappointing to delve into samey tunnels so often. A globe-trotting adventure in the middle of a sci-fi world should inspire. I wonder what GameSpot's going to give it. Blade only manages this with its environments in rare instances. While exploring, you will also find mountains of loot from both treasure chests and enemy drops, but it never gets overwhelming. The vast majority of collectible items are resources. The, the loot in this game looks very satisfying. Loot. Like the, it reminds me of like the old, like old God of War. Drop, How like the colors used to come out the thing. Style. Each equipable Man. spine or gear can slightly alter the way Eve plays, but nothing makes such a dramatic difference that oh stats my are completely goodness. unignorable. If you wish to not bother with them or only care about a bigger number, Stellar Blade is happy to oblige. Stellar Blade has a dreamlike quality in a way, which shouldn't be misinterpreted as saying everything about it is fantastic. Rather, it is like one of those half-remembered dreams that sticks in the back of your mind the entire day. You recall vague details, a collapsing train yard, a ruined opera house, an Asian garden, and forget the blips in between. I came away from Stellar Blade having enjoyed the game quite a bit despite its foibles on the back of its incredibly strong systems. That its biggest weakness is that its tribulations can go on too long is perhaps praise from another perspective, not my own. I was about to, there I was is just a about to say that. Question though, that sticks in the back of my mind. I was mind. just about to say that. Does this game rise to the heights its inspirers achieve? I think it, I think it is. The conclusion I came to is no, but that it attempts so without falling on its face is remarkable enough. How so though? How, why does he think? Okay. 
What does he have? An eight? I knew it. I knew he'd give it an eight. All right. Here's what I'll say. Here's what I'll say. This is shit. This is Oh my god, uh, that was loud. All right. Here's what I'll say, man. At the end of the day, this is only just a review. And at the like, here's what I'll say about this, man. You can't have everything. You cannot have everything. I wouldn't say this game now. I wouldn't call this game perfect. Like, oh my god, ten out of ten. Uh, greatest game of all time. I wouldn't say that, but of course I haven't played the game yet, obviously because it's not out. But like at the end of the day, here's what I want to say, man. For him, for for the guy that was narrating, what's his name, Devonte? For Devonte, you know, he's saying all these things about the pacing of the game and how for some parts it's too long and stuff like that, which is perfectly fine. Again, I have not played the game. But at the same time, though, for some other people, bro, and actually, I for a lot of people, people love that. I'm just be honest with you, bro. I love that. That's just like, that's just like, uh, I don't know, bro. That's just like, I wouldn't say these are the same, but it, it's, it's kind of like in the same ballpark. That's just like GTA Five, right? And that one mission to where it's Franklin, Trevor, and Lamar, and they're taking the semi truck, uh, it like from like. I think it was from, like, the bottom of Polito Bay to, like, the top of Polito Bay. And that mission was dumb long. Yeah, cool, they had the dialogue. But that mission was, like, that that was, like, a seven-mile drive. For me, I love that. Like, for for some reason, I love, like, the long drives. I love, like, the long drives to a mission. I love, um, like, taking alternate routes and stuff. For, so, for me, it wouldn't be a problem. For some other people... Yeah, it will be a problem. You know, if, if they go if they go to a door or whatever, if they like get to a wave point and then there's like another wave point and then there's like another wave point whenever they get to that wave point and then they finally get to like where they're supposed to go and then you have to like find the key to get to the door. I understand I understand when he comes by that. I understand that. But some people like that though. Like and, and that's just what it is. Like, you know, some people love like the lingering missions and stuff like that to where, you know, you're supposed to uh, it, like as soon as you get to like, uh, like the end of something, whatever, then it's like a whole new beginning for another mission. It, it's just crazy. So at the end of the day, I get what he's saying about that. It's kind of 50, 50 because some people love it. Some people don't. And you know, I, I'm one of the people that love like the long gameplays, the useless, uh, you know, uh, the useless travel and stuff like that. I love that. So, um, there was another thing that I wanted to talk about. Um, what did he say? There was another thing that I wanted to talk about. Was it about the boss fights or whatever? Oh, yeah. About this. He said that Devontae said... I'm, I'm, I think that's the guy's name, Devontae. If I'm saying it wrong, then my bad, bro. Sorry about that. He said that um, he did, he doesn't like the like other... Ver like Not other versions, but he doesn't like the other uh, like forms of gameplay. So, like, this right here where, like, she's... I guess she's... I don't know where she's at. But like she's in, like, some type of, like, subway portal. But, um... She doesn't like, he doesn't like, uh, where like she's doing like the shooting games or she's doing like these Sonic, like, you know, running games or whatever. I love that, bro. I love when games have like, obviously you came to play this game to fight, you know, and, and, and destroy boss and stuff like that. But I love playing different varieties of like small games and stuff like that inside of a big game. I love playing, you know, a different variety of games inside of a game. So like this right here would be really fun if I'm being honest. I don't know if this is like some type of like. I think if you're, like, invading, like, these boxes coming at you while you're going crazy or whatever, then you have, like, the shooting thing and stuff like that. I like that. And you have, like, these puzzles. Some people like that. Again, it's a 50-50 thing. A lot of the things um, that Devontae complained about are those are 50-50 things that some people like and some people don't like. And it is what it is, you know. So, um, but this right here, I have seen this a lot in games to where... Hold up, I'm gonna play right here. Number of monsters, and that formula Hold is on. successful more often than not. Where there she... are a handful of missteps. Of okay, I've seen that before. A thou bro, I've seen this a million times in video games to where if you get on like a ledge or whatever and you're supposed to get on this, but then you accidentally jump over, I'm gonna be honest with you, I think that's like a game thing. I, I think that that's something that they uh, should fix because that really isn't the player's fault, especially if you're supposed to like. I don't know what it is. I don't know, like, the science behind, like, gambling and stuff like that. But if you're, like, like right here, and you're supposed to jump over the railing to get to this right here, and you end up, jump, like, jumping on the railing, and then you have to, like, jump, and you jump over, like, the platform that you're supposed to be on, and you, like, fall to your death or whatever, that's, I think that's, like, a gameplay issue that should be fixed. But I think that's not really a big, like, problem, you know? Um, I mean, it could be a problem, you know, if a person dies over and over again to it. But I don't really think that's, you know, that's a really big problem. But other than that, they gave it an 8. Um, 
Devontae doesn't think that it lives up to his hype. Um, I mean, we'll see. I think the whole point of the game is to fight these bosses and stuff like that. Um, the story, I don't know anything about the story. Well, I kind of know a little, like a little bit about her backstory, about Eve's backstory, but not the original story completely. He said there's a lot of like, you know, um, like, I don't know if he said portrayals, but I think he said there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, plot twists and stuff like that. So uh, I guess, man, we'll see. But other than that, man, the gameplay, I don't really think he said anything bad about the gameplay. The gameplay does look fire. Um, and, and I, I really can't wait to play. So comment down below. What did you guys take away from this review? This is Game Spots review. We usually cover uh, IGN's review on games, so I think they usually get the review like two days before the game come out. So we'll see what they say. Shout out to Game Spot for this. Shout out to uh, Devonte. Shout out to everybody who uh, were included uh, into this review for Game Spot. See you guys later, Frank. Turn them out and.